Okay, welcome back. Here's uh, the next thing we'll do with polynomials. So I want to talk about uh, something called Taylor's formula. But uh, before I do this, let's just quickly recall what uh, operations we have defined on polynomials. So, given two polynomials, we had the following things we could take say if I f and g are polynomials, we define what the sum means, uh, we recall what the product of those two polynomials means, right. And well, there is another thing we could do which is a substitution, substitute values for x, so values where x is the variable. So, these are more or less the three things we have done so far. You can take sums, you can take products, you can substitute a value for the, the variable. But there are a few more operations that one can perform on, on polynomials and let us start out by introducing two more two more operations on polynomials. Okay. So, one of them is called composition of course, again must be uh, quite familiar. So, if f and g if f of x, g of x are polynomials, you can combine them to get a new polynomial, their composition called h of x is defined to be f of g of x. Okay. So, uh, what does this mean? It just means in this polynomial f, wherever you have the variable x, you do not substitute a value for x, instead you just substitute the polynomial g of x in place of x, right. So, I, I, I hope this is uh, familiar from something you have seen before. Now, the, this is called the composition of f and g. So, sometimes this is written as f circle g of x, okay, this is just notation for this. So, this is sometimes written like this f circle g and uh, a, a key thing to note is that composition very much depends on the order in which it is it is performed. So, f of g of x may not be the same as g of f of x in general. So, f of g of x need not be the same as g of f of x in general, which means I mean could be equal in some special cases, but for arbitrary f and g, it will not be the case that they are equal. Okay, so uh, let's just do do an example of composition just to get a feel for its basic properties. So if I have f of x is x squared plus x plus one, so degree two polynomial. G of x is uh, x cube minus two. So in this case, a degree three polynomial. Their composition. What's f of g of x mean? It's just you take the polynomial f and plug in this polynomial in, in every slot. So, instead of x, I plug in x cube minus 2 for f of x. So, it is x cube minus 2 squared plus x cube minus 2 plus 1. Okay, so, that is f of g of x. So, one could of course, expand this out in full. This is uh, x power 6 minus uh, 4 x cubed. There is an x cube from there. So, it is a minus 3 x cubed. Uh, plus 4 minus 2 plus 1. Okay. So, if you expand this out in full, this is what it turns out to be. And of course, one can similarly compute in this case g of f of x to see that in fact, it is not the same. Okay. Now, wh what are the key properties of, of this guy? Observe that degree of f circle g, meaning the composition of f and g in this case, one of them was degree 2, the other was degree 3 and their composition had degree 6. Okay. And this is true in general, the degree of a composition if f and g, so note if f and g are non-zero polynomials, if f of x, g of x not 0 polynomials, then uh, the degree of their composition is in fact the product of their degrees.
okay so that's going to be true in general it's uh, very easy to to see i'll just leave this as an exercise for anyone who wants to check this now so i talked about composition uh, it's one operation on polynomials here is a second operation that of derivative okay so again it's the same notion of derivative that uh, you probably seen in calculus except on polynomials you can sort of be defined much more simply right? it, it doesn't require uh, developing uh, a big theory of you know what the limits are and so on and so forth but it, it can just be given by very simple rules in general so derivatives are much simpler when you are only worried about polynomials so what's a derivative uh, of x power n for example so if i take a polynomial f of x which is some power of x so n here is for us since it's a polynomial i'm talking about n greater than equal to 0 the derivative of this polynomial so denoted well you can either call it d by dx of f of x or as f prime of x so these are both just notations is just n times x power n minus 1 okay so the derivative of a polynomial x power n is just n x power n minus 1 this is the usual rule for for derivatives and what i want to do is sort of see what happens when i keep doing this repeatedly so this is what you would call higher order derivatives so observe that all the usual rules for derivatives are of course valid right i mean for me derivative still means whatever it means in calculus so all the usual rules of derivatives are valid so in particular if i take the derivative of a sum of two polynomials the answer will be the sum of the derivatives so observe that the rules for derivatives um, are still the same so if i take d or let's call it if i take f plus g a sum of two polynomials and try to find its derivative then it's just the sum of the derivatives or if i take the product of two polynomials and try to take the derivative so observe the product uh, taking derivative of a product is given by what's called the product rule which is you take derivative of the first term keep the second term as it is this is the product rule and so on so any other rules that you remember for derivatives in in calculus of course all the same apply here right you you can you can pretty much feel free to use all the rules so now observe the the following nice thing which happens when you keep taking derivatives of polynomials so suppose i have a general polynomial so i just write an arbitrary polynomial has this expression it's a degree d polynomial and if you sort of take one derivative what we call f prime of x then the derivative of a constant is zero so it's a polynomial to start with well the constant term now becomes a1 so this is really a1 plus the derivative of this is x square is 2x and so on d a d x to the d minus 1 now of course you can keep doing this you take the derivative of the derivative so this is often what's called the second derivative f double prime or sometimes just written as f2 of x okay where the 2 on top is in brackets so again when you take a derivative again the a1 is a constant so it vanishes so it starts with the 2a2 plus uh, x square will now again give you 2x as derivative so this is 2 into 3 a3x plus uh, the next thing will become let's see uh, 3 into 4 finally you keep doing this d times you you take a derivative at every step you keep doing this d times what you finally end up with is you know only this this last term survives when you do d derivatives and the derivative of this taken d times is just 
a d multiplied by d into d minus 1 into d minus 2 and so on d minus 1 at every step the power of x will sort of climb down and times x power 0 which is just a 1 okay. and if you do it once more since the preceding answer is a constant this is just going to give you a 0 okay. So, this is sort of the full hierarchy if you take a polynomial and you keep doing successive derivatives repeated derivatives to it what you will get is you it will be a degree d polynomial to start with a degree d minus 1 polynomial d minus 2 and so on till finally, it becomes a constant or a degree 0 polynomial and the answer final answer is just a 0 ok. So, now here comes the uh, here is the problem that we want to solve which leads to what is called Taylor's formula. Again it, it shares some aspects with the interpolation polynomial given real numbers. So, let me call them C 1, C 2, So, given d plus 1 real numbers not distinct or anything arbitrary real numbers find a polynomial maybe we will just call it f of x. So, here it is sort of nicer to re index this. So, instead of calling them c 1 c 2 till c d plus 1 let me call them c 0 c 1 till c d okay, and you will see in a minute why. Let us just call these uh, d plus 1 real numbers as c 0 c 1 c 2 dot dot dot. So, I want the following conditions to be satisfied I want my polynomial to have degree at most d and it should be f evaluated at 0 if I plug in x equal to 0 I want it to give me the number c 0 if I take the derivative of f and evaluate it at 0 I want to get the number c 1. The second derivative evaluated at 0 should give me the number c 2 and so on till the dth derivative evaluated at 0 should give me c d ok. So, in the interpolation problem what we were prescribing was some x values and some y values and wanting a polynomial which will take those prescribed value you know uh, which will take the prescribed y values at those x values. Here it is sort of different there is really only one x value which is in play which is the value x equal to 0 at every point what you are really doing is is substituting x equal to 0, but what you are now given is various things you are given the value of the y value at that point you are given the, the value of the derivative at that point, you are given the value of the second derivative at that point and so on and so forth. You are given values of all derivatives, but at a single point. In the interpolation problem you were actually given only the values, there are no derivatives involved, you are only given the values, but at d or d plus 1 different points ok. So, but in, in many ways it is similar both of them really ask for something like this you give d plus 1 uh, pieces of data and ask for a polynomial which which has those you know which satisfies that data essentially ok. And in fact, it turns out this problem is much simpler to solve than the the Lagrange interpolation. So, observe that uh, it is more or less all 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 the things we need are already there on the board. If you plug in x equal to 0, so if you take f of 0 then observe that plugging in x equal to 0 will make all all subsequent terms 0 ok. So, what you get here when you plug in x equal to 0 is only the very first term you only get a 0. <coughs> Similarly, if you take uh, the, the second line you plug in x equal to 0 all subsequent terms are 0 leaving you only with the constant a 1 and second derivative will at x equal to 0 will only give you the constant 2 a 2 the next guy will give you the constant 2 into 3 a 3 and so on. So, observe that so this is quite straightforward from what we are doing that f of 0 is just a 0 f prime the derivative at 0 is just uh, what do we say 1 times a 1 the second derivative at 0 is just 2 times a 2 third derivative at 0 is 2 into 3 a 3 I just write one more fourth derivative at 0 
would just be 2 into 3 into 4 a 4 and so on. Okay. So, in order to make this a little more symmetric let us just throw in a 1 everywhere. It is 1 into 2, 1 into 2 into 3, 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 and so on. Okay. So, what we gather from here is that in fact, these constants a 0 the coefficients a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3 and so on are just directly obtained in terms of the values of the higher derivatives at 0. So, what do we conclude? So, in fact, we conclude that a 0 is just a 1 is just the first derivative, a 2 is the second derivative divided by 1 times 2. by 1 into 2 into 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Okay. And these denominators are precisely what are called the factorials. So, observe that in general if n is a natural number n factorial just means the product of all the numbers from 1 to n. And so, this is just another way of writing this is so, let us just say a j is nothing but the jth derivative of f at 0 divided by j factorial. Okay. So, this holds for j equals 1, 2, 3 till, till d. So, this is actually true for case 1, 2, so observe from here first derivative divided by 1 factorial is just a 1. Uh, second derivative divided by 2 factorial, third derivative divided by 3 factorial and so on. But in fact, one can sort of just to have a more uniform expression, you can also define 0 factorial as 1. So, here is another, so this definition really is only if n is at least 1, but the usual convention is to define 0 factorial also as 1. So, this can be as a convention, in which case a 0 also has the same has this is given by the same expression. So, observe this is nothing but you take f you can view that the function itself as being the 0th derivative of itself divided by 0 factorial which is a 1. 0th derivative just means you do not do any derivatives you just leave it as the function itself. And so, a 0 is f if you wish you can think of it as the 0th derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 0 factorial. So, in fact, with this convention this is also true for j equal to 0. So, if you wish you can now uh, change this to say it is true for j go going from 0 to d. Okay. So, what does that mean? Uh, the jth derivative evaluated at 0 is in fact given that is exactly what we require to be c j. So, conclusion is that the polynomial f of x that you want is nothing but so, it is the sum. So, I will just use the summation notation it is j going from 0 to d of uh, so f of x is just given by the sum of its higher derivatives at 0 divided by j factorial times x power j. So, this formula here is what you would call Taylor's formula. So, this is for where f is a polynomial of degree at most d. And this is what is called Taylor's formula. Right. So, this is this is something that holds in general for any given any polynomial of degree at most d what we have said is its coefficients can all be obtained in terms of derivatives of the function. So, the function itself can be written back in terms of the coefficients like this. So, just to complete this uh, the solution to the problem that we mentioned if you sort of are given prescribed what the derivatives are then you just use you just plug these values in there and you figure out what the function is. So, what is, what, is a, what is the solution to this problem here? So, the solution to the problem as posed there is the following. 
that I know what the jth derivative at 0 is. It is given to be z, c j. So, therefore, my function f is nothing but summation c j by j factorial x power j. This is, the this is the function that you want, a polynomial of degree at most d with prescribed higher order derivatives at 0. Okay, so, it solves this problem. Now, just uh, so one remark here, observe this may not have degree exactly d because you know the dth derivative could be a 0. Suppose my c d is a 0, it means that x power d occurs with coefficient 0. So, this could very well have degree smaller than d. So, all we can say is at most d is, is the best we can say, because we do not quite know what this last, last uh, real number is. Now, the other thing here is to observe that, so observe just one more thing since we sort of talked about the, the 0 1 idea at some point. If you look at, so let us just think of this as follows, think of it as c j multiplied by x power j divided by j factorial. So, let me just think of it like this. So, you look at this, this guy x power j by j factorial, let us call it a polynomial something, let us call it f j of x. Okay. So, for each value of j between 0 and d, I have a polynomial called f j of x. It is a very simple polynomial in this case, it is just x power j divided by j factorial. Now, what property does this have? So, if I take this polynomial f j and I, I subject it to, to say an arbitrary number of derivatives. So, I take uh, f j and I say uh, I take k derivatives of f j and I evaluate it at 0. Okay. So, my question is what is this answer? What do I get when I take this polynomial subject it to k derivatives? So I apply derivatives k times and then evaluate the answer at 0. So, observe that here is what happens if k is smaller than j, if k is strictly smaller than j, then taking k derivatives will give you some constant in front, but there will be some coefficient, of, there will be some power of x left over, which when you evaluate at x equal to 0 will give you a 0. So, this will give you a 0 if k is strictly smaller than j. <coughs> if k is strictly bigger than j, then here is a polynomial of degree j, but you are taking derivatives far too many times, you are taking derivatives more than j times. So, of course, the, the whole derivative itself is 0 in this case, you do not even need to plug in x equal to 0. So, if k is less than j or greater than j, it is in fact 0, but if you put exactly, if you subject it to exactly k to j derivatives, then this is going to give you j into j minus 1 into j minus 2 and so on each time you take a derivative and when you plug in x equal to 0, you will get exactly 1. Okay. So, let us just rewrite this f j k of 0 is 1 if k equals j and 0 if k is not equal to j. Okay. So, this is again starting to look a lot like what we did in the case of interpolation in the, in the, in the example with vectors and so on, it is sort of like the 0 1 idea. So, these, these polynomials f j s are like the you know with respect to the operation of taking derivatives, here it is not uh, you are not really plugging in or there is no dot product, but now here the operation is with respect to taking derivatives. f j has the property that it is most well behaved when you take exactly j derivatives and plug in x equal to 0. When you do anything else, when you plug in, uh, when you subject it to any to k derivatives where k is not equal to j, the answer is always a 0. Okay. So, this is again the 0 1 idea in action if you wish, but here it is much simpler. I mean it would not be particularly illuminating to go this way straight up. Okay. And uh, so, there is just one, one slight variant of this that I want to mention. So, here is a variation of this problem. Uh, suppose you are given d real numbers, you want to find the polynomial f of x of degree at most d, which has the following property that if you take j derivatives or, or let us just write it out the same way, if you evaluate f at there is also a real number a which is given. So, the evaluation of f at a gives you c naught, first derivative at a gives you c 1, second derivative at a 
gives you C 2 and so on till the dth derivative of A gives you the number C D. Okay, where A is also some real number. So, what is A? A is also some real number given A uh, given A which is a real number. Okay, and so this is basically instead of plugging in x equal to 0, what you are doing is really plugging in x equal to A everywhere. And so, given all higher order derivatives at, at the point A, how do you reconstruct the, the function f itself. So, the problem now is find f, well that is that is what is written there. Right? Okay. So, find the polynomial and I will just leave this as an exercise, which you can more or less do by pretty much following the same set of steps. Okay. So, just uh, try co copying the same argument that we did with x equal to 0. It turns out there is also a simpler thing that one can do, but anyway that is something that uh, we will look at at some time. 